Okay, so this will be a video showing how to use chipmunk behavior in Construct 2. Um, some people requested that I create some videos how to use chipmunk behavior or just Construct 2 tutorials or whatever. So this is all be just looking at chipmunk behavior stuff. So, and with this, you kind of create a like a grappling hook and swing on it, and uh, it could attach to uh, objects, and you could like shorten or lengthen the grappling hook, and you could like shoot it out and retract it, and you could also um, you could also like uh, let go of it, so you kind of create more than one grappling hook. And it's not perfect, but you can see it kind of kind of works, I guess. So anyways, that's just an example of what you can do. So I'll kind of uh, go through some stuff with the chipmunk behavior. So I created a new project. I'm going to keep that other one open just for reference in case I need it because I haven't used the chipmunk behavior in a while, so I might forget how to do stuff. But I created a new project, just like a retro style project or template. So now I, I created a sprite object, named it player, I also created a tile map. And what we're going to do is add a family, add the player to it, and call it physics objects. It's better to use families and apply a behavior to the family, because then that behavior will get used by uh, all the objects in that family and you don't have to add it to each object you just add it to the family and it gets applied to all the objects and we don't want the player to rotate so we turn that prevent rotation yes okay and we do the same thing for the tile map in case we have multiple tile maps probably won't but just in case we do it'll be a good thing to have it in its own family so we go physics tile maps I guess and add a behavior to the tile map uh, family and I guess prevent rotation yes and movable yes I think it automatically gets set to those things because it's tile map but I'll just set them anyways just to make sure okay so we have that now in the event sheet I created two new events event sheets a player event sheet and a buttons event sheet and then I included the event sheet so let's just remove that for an example include event sheet player and it gets added there so for the buttons I just copied some stuff over from the other project the global variables I copied them first into my buttons event sheet and then I copied all the events and what this basically will let me do is allow me to customize my buttons or the keys that I'll be using and it gives um stores like the key states and global variables and the button key codes in case I want to change them um, so if I'm not holding down a button it'll be set to a value of zero if I press it it'll set it to a value of one 
if I keep it held down, it'll set it to a value of two. So that'll help me kind of understand, or it'll help me create controls for the player. So for example, I have this, um, let's just start like this. Okay, we add an event, compare variable, and we check uh, if the right state is greater than zero, which means it's been pressed or is being held down. We'll add an action for the player um, apply force. These are all the uh, actions from the chipmunk behavior. Okay, so uh, apply force at an offset. So this is the force values here, and this is the offset. The offsets um, relative to the origin point of the object and force is the force <laughs> you can have it in rectangular or polar uh, values I'll just keep it rectangular for this so I guess force of 100 And actually, yeah, let's just keep it that for now to keep it simple. And uh, the offset, we don't need an offset. Let's copy it, change this to left state, and have this in the opposite direction. Negative will be towards the left. Okay, so now. Let's add another one for jumping, I guess. Upstate equals one, that meaning this key has been pressed. So it'll only fire once because as soon as you press it, it'll set to one and then it'll set to two. So, um, yeah. And then set negative 100 for the Y okay now let's see how that looks it falls and when I press the keys it moves around it's not jumping for some reason let me see why an up state equals one. Oh, okay. We need to apply an impulse instead of force. An impulse is um, uh, like if you want it to move like instantaneously, I guess, like it's been hit by something then you apply an impulse. A force is like, uh, I don't know, like it builds up the um, momentum, I guess. Whereas the, f the impulse, it's like instant momentum in that, in that direction that you want it to go, I guess. I'm not sure if I explained that right, but that's how I understand it. <laughs> so impulse, yeah. Try it. Okay, so it jumps now. Um, you kind of see it like when it falls, it kind of like sinks into the ground. So we're going to try and fix that. Oh, and anyways.
Also, I want to uh, change some global settings. Uh, let me see what I did in the other project. <coughs> Fixed time step of 1.5. Set chipmunk space either eight innings. Okay, so. I'm going to set the fixed time step a little bit uh, quicker, I think. It'll just run faster, I guess. Because I feel like it runs a bit too slow at the moment. And I'm going to change iterations to 15. I think it'll cause it to be a little bit more accurate. So let's see what... <clears throat> Let's see what the difference is. As you can see, it's moving a lot quicker. So it's a little more responsive, I guess. Uh, it just feels more... more accurate, I guess. So... <clears throat> Let's look at what I did in the other project. Okay, so I'm going to add some instance variables to the physics object family. Um, what were they called? I guess there was the normal x and normal y and what was the other one? Oh, contact normal, contact depth. And contact normal y and contact depth. These will just help me um, store some values that I can use. Uh, in, relative to like how the player hits surfaces because at the moment it kind of sinks into them and I'm going to make it so that it doesn't sink into the surface. And that's just uh, something to do with the chipmunk uh, physics. Um, I'm not sure exactly why it does that. Something related to... Uh, I don't know. I'm not going to try and explain it. <laughs> it just does it. Anyways. Okay, so... The player... On... Post collide or pre collide? I think it was on post collide. Post collide. So th this means it has hit something. Okay, so let's take a look at the other project chipmunk on post collide. Contact that is greater than negative one. Okay. Uh, we'll just set the contact depth. Set the normal to contact normal. Okay. Okay, 
So we'll go here and we set the set the value of the contact depth to the chipmunk. This is all um, stuff you can get from the con from the collision on post collision. Okay, so contact depth, and it'll give the index in case there's more than one point of contact. But in, in this case, just the first one should be fine. So we we'll give the value of zero. Okay, now we copy that a couple times and then we just change this to the normal and we change this to actually if we just hit that it'll show up. Contact normal X and give it a zero index. And then for this one, we do the same thing for Y. Give it a zero index. Okay, now we got those set on post collide. Now we check, actually, let's just make sure. Okay, greater than negative one. Okay, so we add a sub event and we check. You do it this way, I guess. Player dot chipmunk dot. Wait, no. What is it? Player dot. Contact depth is greater than negative one, I guess. Then that means <coughs> could have just checked the actual chipmunk value here. We didn't really need to store it, but we might need it later. So yeah, anyways, what this means is if the if it's collided with the surface and it is inside the surface with a distance greater than negative one, then we will want to push it out in the direction of the contact normal, which will be away from the surface, basically. Uh, it'll push it out. Um, we'll use the value of the depth to push it out that amount so then it will be basically flush against the surface that is the plan let's just take a look at what it does oh um Friction. Okay, I guess in this case we're sending the friction and we're doing the moving out in another event. Contact depth. Okay. Okay. Um, let's set the friction. Because we're going to need to set the friction uh, to zero when you're jumping. Because if you're jumping up against a wall, you don't want to get slowed down by it. You want to just kind of slide up the sides of a wall or down the side of the wall. You don't want it to be getting stuck to the wall. So... Huh. You want to make 
make this an absolute value, which means it doesn't matter if it's negative or positive, it'll get turned into a positive if it's negative. So negative 5 would be considered 5, negative 6 would be considered just 6, and if it's greater than 1, then we will, what will we do? Set position to player x, player contact at times, and set the contact at the 0. I just copy that. Since it's the same, I'm using the same uh, instance variable names, it'll just copy over in the same name for the sprite. Anyways, what we did, we added an action set position of the player. So basically, we went added an action and we went down to set position right here. And then we type in this stuff, player x, position of the player currently, and we add this, the contact depth times the contact normal x. And for y, we do the same, the position plus contact depth times player contact normal y, and that'll just offset the player in the direction of the contact normal by the length of the contact depth. So it'll push it out of the surface and then we'll set the contact depth to zero because it's no longer um, inside the, uh, the surface. It'll be sitting uh, flush against it. Uh, let's see what that does. It should not get stuck in any surface. So, did you see that? Look at how it hits the surface. It doesn't go inside it. See that? I don't know if you could tell if it's if it's uh, but it is it is hitting it flush and it's not sinking into it. Before it was sinking into the surface, but now it's not. Oh wait, what was that? <laughs> I don't know. So it works pretty good. Now, let's see. What do we want to do next? I think a good thing to do is control the friction of the character so that when you start moving, um, it'll move. This is what you have to do if you're creating your own movement um, controls uh, with the physics behavior. You gotta do all this so that it moves the way that you want it to move. Because uh, you can't use the platform uh, platformer behavior with the physics, um, with the chipmunk physics. Okay, so let's add a another instance value or variable. We'll do on floor. We created a bool boolean value, either true or false.
Okay, so... I need to figure out if the player is standing on the floor. How do we do that? I think the way that I did it in the other one <coughs> is uh I think I had um let's see here query first hitting line second wait but I think it checks to see if something is hitting a line. I think there might be a better way to do that. The reason it is overlapping and offset might not work is because uh, it doesn't take into account the collision polygon if it's a sprite. Um, we want to we want to take into account the actual collision area, the polygon. So. We have to do a line segment query. This is just check if anything is overlapping a line. If the line hits another physics object, basically. So we take point A and point B. So it'll start at point A and then it'll travel to point B. It'll check the objects in group on the specific layer. So we start at the player uh, bounding box, bounding box. I don't know if that is relative to the actual collision box. Let's see what it says up here. Look at the bottom edge of the object's bounding box. What is the bounding box? Is that the collision box? 
or is it just the area of the sprite image? So that's I'm not sure what it what it corresponds to. It could be just a sprite image and we don't really that's not the most ideal way to do it. But since since the object fills up the whole sprite, we'll just we'll just use this for um, to keep things simple, I guess, for now. But just keep that in mind. Get bottom plus one, I guess, and this will be just basically the same thing, but on the left side. In group zero layers, whatever. I don't know. Keep that that like that. For, just to keep things simple for now. Okay, so if something's hitting, it will need to go in the other direction as well. So we'll just do that for now. But um, actually, let's see what this is overlapping. Oh, okay. It's overlapping that, that else. Oh, another reason. Actually, I don't know. Minus one. Plus one. Okay, I understand now. So this... Man, this is hard to explain. <laughs> okay. How do I explain this? So that you will understand. Okay, um, say we have, this is our player sprite, and it gets contact with the floor. We need to check if it's on the floor. If it's, if it's like this, um, explain this okay we need to check if it's on the floor in all different types of scenarios so if there's a physics object like this how do we check if it is standing on it okay so or standing on this or standing on this etc now we'll need to do a query a line and basically we give it a start position in this case we'll start here and we'll make that line go this way and if it hits something it'll say that it's standing on top of it it's on the floor basically and okay so that works for this direction we also need to have a travel in the other direction start here and go over here because if it's here we'll hit it this way but if we only use that then if it's standing on an opposite edge over here it'll start and it won't hit anything because it's already inside it so it's moving outside and it doesn't hit anything so it won't think that it's on the surface okay so now we could we'll also check from here to there and from here to there on the corners 
that's one way to check if you're standing on an edge it'll get both sides of the player uh, standing here or if it's standing there there or there so it'll hit it right here it won't hit it there in this case it'll hit it both cases here it'll hit it there and it won't hit it there now it doesn't work if you're standing on a corner like this because it'll scan down there and it'll scan down here it won't hit anything won't hit anything so that's why you have the horizontal ones as well this way and that way so that if there's a little uh, object poking up it'll catch it and it'll know that it's standing on top of uh, something and then you'll set the variable to on floor to true so that'll so then you'll know if you're on floor or off of the floor and this is important if you want to uh, control your jumps to only allow jumping if you're standing on a floor so hopefully that all makes sense and that's why you have to scan all these cases horizontal for these things poking up the horizontal if you're standing just on a horizontal plane it won't catch anything because it'll be like this and this and it won't hit any any horizontal floor that's why you need the vertical ones anyways hopefully that all makes sense and it's a little complicated but that's what you're dealing with when you use physics behavior so we'll just keep that there <laughs> anyways hopefully that makes sense so we do the scanning from one side and from the other side as well so it'll be left to right now what happens when it does hit it let's check what I do okay if it's overlapping set on floor true actually okay yeah okay so this means it hit something well what did it hit we'll add a sub event and check if uh, the player is overlapping Um, overlapping at an offset, I guess. Yeah, sure. Overlap at an offset. Uh, physics objects, because we might have multiple physics objects. Or make it an or event or condition overlapping the tile map okay so if it's that then we set the variable it'll be set boolean on floor to true okay we copy that for the other one on floor to true Okay. And we also need it for the vertical ones. So left minus one and left plus one. And um, right
So that should be good. We could just create another event at the top. Uh, actually, add an else just so that if one, if, if one uh, catches something and it says it's on the floor, we don't have to run all the other ones. As long as one of them is true, then it's it's okay. Every tick, every tick, we could set it to false, just so that it gets set accurately. So if it falls off an edge, it'll be um, false order. Now we add another condition up with the jump event. Uh, compare that the um, where is it compare player dot on floor equals one so it'll only jump if it's on floor let's see if it works I don't know if it will let's just check and see on floor can you jump nope so it's not working for some reason Try turning that off, see if it even gets set to true. Yeah, it gets set, so the querying is working, but for some reason. Hmm. I send the tick count just to see if it actually is doing anything. Okay, it does it once when it hits. For some reason it doesn't do it afterwards. Hmm. Maybe I need to put it in every tick.
try moving it up into these. See if that makes a difference. It's just an easy way to tell if an event is firing or not. Check if the text thing changes. Huh. I thought I would continuously fire the event. I don't know why it just does it when it first hits it. Query first hitting the line segment. Query. Pair. Uh, put the first instance hit along a line segment and calculate. Why does it do it only once? It should do it more than once.
wonder if it's a bug, but maybe it has something to do with the tile map. wonder if it has something to do with the tile map. Maybe there's some bug with the chipmunk behavior. I, don't know. I thought I would run this every every frame, every tick, or whatever, but I guess it doesn't do that. I don't know why. Maybe I'll just do that. <laughs> that might be all we need, I guess. Let's try that. No, that doesn't work either because you can jump when you touch the wall. That was weird. Okay. get rid of those. <laughs> it's not working the way that I thought it would. Okay, so what to do next? Oh yeah, friction. I guess on floor uh, set friction point five for the jump. Set friction to zero when you jump. 